Now on Talking Solutions, moving day. I want to welcome into the studio, Ruth Almain. Thank you. You are actually with the Cleveland Clinic. What is your role, Ruth? I'm the head of the social work department there. I have four social workers. We help support everyone, individuals and families and the community around all the issues that we treat there. I'm lucky enough also to be associated with moving day. I can't wait to talk about that. I am a big fan of Cleveland Clinic because that's where my MS neurologist is. You know the building, the Lou Ruvo Center for Brain Health that you are well aware of. People either love or hate that building. There is no in-between. So true. When I tell people where I work, they oftentimes don't know. But then I'll say, you know that really funky building downtown? And they're like, oh yeah. So they all know it. The Um, one that looks like it's melting? Yep. That's the usual comment. Designed by Frank Gehry. That's right. The design of the building makes such sense when you realize what kind of work is going on inside. Among the things that the Lou Ruvo Center and Cleveland Clinic are very deep into. Alzheimer's is one of the mm-hmm. reasons for the existence of yeah. Luruvo anyway. Yeah. Parkinson's is a big element as well. And that's what we're talking about, right. Parkinson's right. disease when it comes to moving day. Right. And our relationship here in this community with the Parkinson's Foundation itself is new. This is only the second time we've done this event here in Las Vegas. And last year they started about the same time that the Cleveland Clinic was named as a center of excellence for Parkinson's. So we were doing all the things that come with that and the PR to let folks know again about the services we provide. At the same time, the Parkinson's Foundation said we would really like to do a walk there because we'd like to raise awareness and we'd also like you guys to help us raise money in this community. So one of the ways that they can give back too is there's community grants that come here and there's other things again they fund, but they don't have enough staff to be here. So this is really truly this collaborative adventure that helps us get information out about Parkinson's, about living with Parkinson's, as well as providing an opportunity for folks to raise money for a cause that's so important to them. Ruth Almain is with us from the Cleveland Clinic, and we are talking about moving day. It's all about Parkinson's disease. Ruth, as you spread the word and raise awareness about Parkinson's in our community, are you constantly amazed at how many people have been touched or affected by Parkinson's? Because you haven't heard my story. Not yet. I lost my dad to Parkinson's less than five years ago. It is Mm. cruel. Yeah. It's a horrible condition. He should still be here, as should thousands of others who have died from the effects of Parkinson's disease. So I'm behind you in this effort big time for (laughs) a lot of different reasons. But you've got to constantly have people saying, Parkinson's, my family was affected too. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think it's one of those diseases that, as you probably know, people don't always talk about. With Parkinson's, a lot of times people start to get isolated because if people have tremors, for example, that can be hard to go out publicly or hard to go out to eat, just the normal things the rest of us get to do sometimes without thinking about it. People can get so isolated, so they don't always talk about what it is. I'm amazed. I was in Cleveland a couple months ago, got talking to my Uber driver. Well, sure enough, she said, oh yeah, my dad had Parkinson's. And it's, again, obviously you've experienced not only having a family member with it, but when you start talking with people, there are so many people that know someone who's living with it or has lived with it. I think it's certainly a point of connection for a lot of us because when you find out someone else has also been affected by Parkinson's somewhere in their family, someone they know, someone they worked with, it brings us all together because we all understand from the inside how horrible Parkinson's is and how desperately we need cures. Right. Right. Cures and effective treatments and medications that work all the time that aren't going off and on and abilities and again in the support services too around the ways to and I don't mean to minimize it by saying live with Parkinson's but I've met some incredible people in the time I've known folks with Parkinson's who are doing some really wild and fun things and they're really adamant like you know what I have Parkinson's but Parkinson's isn't going to get me like I'm going to live my life and here's who I choose to be with here's how I choose to live my life I want everybody to know that those options are out there for them this is isn't only about now I'm sick and now I go back and forth to the doctor. That's part of it certainly and should be, but there's so many other things that are important. I love hearing about fighters. I'm a fighter when it comes to MS, another condition that is serviced by the Cleveland Clinic. I appreciate their guidance and oversight. But as far as Parkinson's, you talked just a moment ago, Ruth, about living with Parkinson's. You know what? If any of us had the choice of not having a medical condition of that sort, duh, of course we'd say I'd rather not have it. But the fact is, you have the diagnosis. Now, the question is, what are you going to do about it? One of my favorite sayings is, 
I didn't know how strong I was until I had no choice. Yeah. It's a battle. It's a fight all the time. Yeah. But there are support services. There's also hope that glimmer on the horizon that work is being done to try to help cure this. And when you talk, Ruth, about living with Parkinson's, I think probably the biggest example that we all know is Michael J. Fox. He definitely had early onset Parkinson's. Yes. And for decades... He has been the face of fighting Parkinson's, right. being able to deal with it. It's a hard battle. Mm. It's constantly going at you, and it right. does make some headway, but that doesn't mean it wins. And when we talk about Michael J. Fox and his Parkinson's Foundation, which has been huge yes. for the cause, there's also a lot of other names people are aware of, but they might not realize that the reason why Neil Diamond will no longer perform. Mm -hmm. The reason why Linda Ronstadt doesn't Mm -hmm. sing anymore. The reason why we have actually lost a number of figures to suicide had to do with their Parkinson's diagnosis. It's not easy. And we don't see that, right? With you or other those famous people, like we see them kind of in their best moments, but it is, it's every day. It's, am I getting out of bed at all? It starts there to, I'll get out of bed. And what am I going to do when I get out of bed? And how am I going to feel when I get out of bed? And so all those daily struggles are the pieces we need to remember happen for people all the time, are happening right now for people. That kind of kindness and consideration can never be overestimated. But someone said there's only two days in your life that you have no control over. Yesterday, because it's over, Mm -hmm. and tomorrow, because it's not here yet. So once again, a reminder that the only thing you have is today and right now. Is it worth it to you to fight? Yeah, I get frustrated, but I'm an infinitely positive person. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to give up one day to whatever medical condition is trying to trip me up. And I hope that that's the case for many of the people who are dealing with Parkinson's disease. Absolutely. And you probably know this too. Just at Louisville, for example, we have a support group for people with Parkinson's and their caregivers, and some come by themselves and some come together. We've got counseling services for people. My counselor, just this last week, she said, I have people who come in who are talking about their Parkinson's. And she said, and I know they're looking at me like, I'm not sure how you can help me. And I said, that's because they need to be in their community. You need to send them to like rock steady boxing. They need to see people living with this illness because otherwise you don't know, right? All you see is Michael J. Fox on TV and you think, well, he's doing fine, but you don't know how hard he works every day to do that. So when you can go to a dancing with Parkinson's class, when you can go to a rock steady boxing, when you can go to an improv class, when you can go to a support group and you see people who are figuring out ways to do this and that they're not alone because it's so important people know they're not alone. You are so right. Ruth, I'm going to make sure that I have all the links and information on our Talking Solutions Facebook page. Oh, fantastic. Along with the podcast of our discussion today, Ruth Almain is with us from Cleveland Clinic. We're talking about Moving Day. It's a big event coming up on Saturday, September 28th. We'll talk about that in a moment. Ruth, you just mentioned about people with Parkinson's coming into the Luruvo Cleveland Clinic location there in downtown Las Vegas. I think in a lot of cases, they're also needing to be around other people who really understand what's going on. Because I don't think anybody with a medical condition like Parkinson's is wanting to wear a big sign on their chest saying, hi, I've got Parkinson's. Right. You appreciate all of the things that people do to help make things easier, opening a door or seeing if you're okay loading the groceries or whatever you're doing. But to be inside a place like Lou Ruvo Cleveland Clinic and be able to talk to other people who really, really get it because their dad or a member of their family has or had Parkinson's, their partner has or had it. They understand a lot more than the average person on the street. Absolutely. And I think I've not had anybody in my family that has had Parkinson's. If you're lucky enough to have a job like mine, you get to meet people. I mean, people allow me into some pretty intimate moments in their life, including really honest discussions about how hard it is to live with these diseases, how hard it is to love someone and care for someone day in and day out. But I've heard just these incredible stories again about how much people felt like it was the end of their life. We have people come in and say, I don't know how long I want to live with this at all. I was just diagnosed. But I get it because you think it's going to be a terrible end. They don't see anything between now and the terrible end, however that is. Sometimes people come in for rehab at our 
place, for example, and they see a whole lot of people who are living with all these things and the care and support they can get and see that there's other things. There's going to be hard times. There's going to be tough times, but there can be really great times too. And there's opportunities, again, I think that come from being in our community, being with other people, and you don't have to think of all the answers yourself, right? You can hear other people talking about what they've done, how they've made it work, what they've tweaked, how they got some agency to cough up some resources that they didn't think they could get. Those are invaluable lessons, and then you don't have to do it yourself. I am so looking forward to the Moving Day event, which is Saturday, September 28th. I think it's a Bunker Park. It is, Wayne Bunker Family Park. And this is going to be a day where a lot of people who understand from every perspective, yes, about Parkinson's and the issues surrounding Parkinson's disease are obviously going to be part of this event. Yeah. If you've never been to this kind of fundraising event, you can't imagine how really fun it is and how much of a celebration it is, too. We have teams that sign up and are signing up already. We're almost halfway to our $50,000 goal that we've set for this year for the walk. We've got 16 teams signed up so far, and they vary. There's business teams, like the Lulu Ruvo Center has a team. Rock City Boxing and Dancing with Parkinson's, of course, have teams set up. But then there's family teams. There's a team called Team Tennille and March with Linda and Christie's Warriors. And so there's family teams that sign up and sometimes their loved ones are with them or sometimes their loved ones have passed but they're still just committed to helping us raise funds but then again you're out there there's a long walk there's a short walk there's a, I want to sit here in the shade and with the vendors and the other people that are around there's music there'll be entertainment there's a movement tent it's called so everybody has a chance to experience things like dancing with Parkinson's and yoga and a class we have at Lou Ruvo that combines music therapy and physical therapy so it's movement to music which sometimes for people is easier. That will be going on also. People have a chance to try out all those things and there'll be food and there'll be things. So it really is, again, an opportunity to just see how many people are living with this disease in our area or are impacted and just be together and celebrate that. And then also celebrate all the work that's been done to raise funds, knowing that that's going to turn into services here in our community. I love that. Pamela Lappin and Dancing with Parkinson's was a guest here on Talking Solutions, which is how I found you. Right, right. Absolutely. Pamela? Thanks, All Pam. the love to you. Pamela, I'm sure, is going to be on site. I know yes, she will oh, absolutely. be. Absolutely. The thing that I brought up also when I had Pamela in to talk about dancing with Parkinson's is that the whole concept of moving is so underrated. It's so important to people who don't have any medical condition. You right. still don't yes. move enough. There are three main components to us all living our best life. Nutrition, good sleep, Exercise. Yes. That is important to every single person. And people are sedate. They're in their chairs. Your job requires you to be down yes. for several hours a day. But it's so bad for your health. It's so bad for our health. More and more, we're hearing, don't sit in your chair so long. Just get up and walk to the other end of the hallway or something. You have to move. But exercise in particular for people with Parkinson's is so highly recommended, really as a treatment. So my first entree into Parkinson's community was I helped start a pedaling for Parkinson's class, the YMCA in Marquette, Michigan. It was incredibly easy to start, but it was actually started by a doctor at the Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland called Jay Alberts. And we have people in this community that I met when I got here who are part of his original research. It was a pretty wild experience for me because we started a class and people just came out of the woodwork who had Parkinson's to cycle. The research says if you can cycle at a certain level and get your heart rate at a certain level three times a week, that you can decrease your Parkinson's symptoms by 35%. So we had people who some had been big bikers in their day, but couldn't bike out on the roads anymore. And then people who were just coming to say, I'm willing to try anything, who pedaled their hearts out three days a week, and they built this little community. And we had people who were wheeled in in a wheelchair because it was too far to walk. And we had people, again, who couldn't talk very well. For some people with Parkinson's, the speech sure. becomes an issue. Oh, yeah, that becomes a big issue. But he was the biggest biker of anybody in that class. And he was the one that started helping people again if they needed to get in their bikes and get their feet in the cages and pedals correctly. So that was my first entree and watching people again who said like, oh, I'm going to live with this and people who so missed biking. And you're in the YMCA where people go to work out. I mean, it was really about your health and it was very clear that that's what it was about for them and their commitment. And that was really an incredible opportunity. So when I came here, that gave me an opportunity to meet some people in the Parkinson's community who have kind of scooped me up in a way. And I really am appreciative of those friendships and that new community for me as I moved here. But their willingness again to say, we want to come together to figure out how do we help more people. We know there's more people we're not reaching right now. How do we do that? Ruth Almain is with us. We're talking about Moving Day, which is Saturday, September 28th at Wayne Bunker Family Park. 
It's got to do with Parkinson's disease and moving and the things that it can do that are beneficial. Ruth, I'm going to make sure that I have all the links and information on our Talking Solutions Facebook page, along with the podcast of our discussion today. Excellent. Talking about moving day, it is Saturday, September 28th at Wayne Bunker Family Park. Now, I know I haven't been invited to do this, but I want to open it up to people who don't directly have Parkinson's. You should move to people who have other conditions. Like I said, I have MS. It's important for all of us to move. And I think the bigger number of people that you have participating in moving day on September 28th, the better. Because we're going to raise that awareness. Right. People are going to understand it better. And all the people who are there dealing with Parkinson's are going to feel so supported by all the people around them doing the same thing. Absolutely. It is amazing, too, because, again, the awareness is important. The money is really important. One of the most important things to me is that people come and go, I had no idea this many people cared about me. And even in the media that goes out, we know people will hear this who will never, ever come for services. They'll never come to a walk, but they're going to sit there and they're going to hear this on the radio and say, I'm not alone. I can call someone if I need them. And I think that's so incredibly important. Yes. Understanding and knowing that there are people out there who will not only listen, but understand. Yeah. And sometimes it's just important to have someone be there for you. Right. You know, one of the things that is really common with Parkinson's, part of it is the dopamine in our brains that we all have. People with Parkinson's don't have enough. And literally one of the things it does for us is motivate us. It's the difference between saying, okay, I'll get up and go do those things I need to do. And just literally not being able to get get there not being able to get up to do that. So that, again, can just challenge even more issues around feeling depressed about the illness, feeling depressed about the losses that you do have to grieve. There's things you're going to have to give up, but there's new things. When we can exercise and move, that helps all of us increase the dopamine in our brains. And so important, again, for people with Parkinson's to do that. That exercise, that getting out and moving, all the things we said, when you move, when you get outside, then your sleep's better. If you move and get outside, Mm -hmm. right, you eat better. I mean, all those things play into that whole person we are, no matter what we're living with. That is the beautiful thing about movement and exercise, just anything. In fact, I'm well known in this building because I'm so concerned about the people I work with who do not have these medical conditions, but sit all day long because that's how their job works. And so I go around here in the building (laughs) and I go, let me show you the trick that I learned from physical therapy. This is how easy it is to do sit and stands. It's so easy. If you just every hour or two do five or 10 sit and stands, just get in a firm chair with no wheels, sit there, get balanced, raise to your full height, move your arms up and come back down. That's all you have to do. It can be so simple. But it's so important. It's so important. When I said I met this group of people connected to the Parkinson's community here, we got together and have created a website called Parkinson's Place Las Vegas. And our idea was we wanted to have a single location where people could go to get information. We're a work in progress, but we have put on two events called the Movement Fair that are literally about coming and having an opportunity to practice all the movement things that exist in the community. Yes. Because some people are going to say, well, maybe I should go do yoga, right? But if you've never done yoga, if you've never been to a yoga studio, that seems too hard to do. So, of course, Pam Lappin and Dancing with Parkinson's is a crucial part of that. We've had people doing improv. We have the rock steady boxing people. We have our yoga folks we work with at Lou Ruvo Center. So it's a day-long presentation. It's opportunities, again, to practice those things. And for different vendors to come, some of them are pharmaceutical companies. We just have started working with Zappos. At the same time, they started their adaptive line of clothing. The conversations I heard people saying about the ability for their spouses with Parkinson's to dress themselves or to be able to go use the bathroom by themselves and be able to put their pants back on. I mean, just the basics. But so those kind of opportunities, again, for people to come, try out the dancing, try out yoga, try out rock steady boxing moves, and to be with another 100 people or so, plus to hear a speaker. We had Nan Little, who came down from Washington, She's written a book called If I Can Climb Mount Kilimanjaro, Why Can't I Brush My Teeth? She is a big biker with Pedaling for Parkinson's. Taught me a lot reading her book. And then we had the gentleman who won the amazing race in Canada who has Parkinson's come last year. So those are the kind of things, again, we're trying to just let people know, come and try this out. Call somebody up if you know they have Parkinson's and your friend and say, hey, let's go to this movement fair. We think this would be a good thing. Moving day is Saturday, September 28th at the Wayne Bunker Family Park. Ruth Almain is with us from the Cleveland Clinic. 
We're talking about Parkinson's, how people can get involved in this event. Their families, loved ones, all their support people can come to this event. Some of the stuff that you're saying too, Ruth, which I find very exciting, the Zappos line of adaptive clothing. I start to cry when stuff happens because it touches me so much that the world is waking up and letting people who have conditions like Parkinson's disease know that they're not alone. We do see them because I think when you have a condition like Parkinson's, you believe you're invisible. Chances are you're down maybe in a wheelchair. You're not standing up walking around like everybody else. So you're thinking people aren't noticing you, that you're fading into the woodwork. And sometimes I believe that is unfortunately the case. People aren't paying attention. But the world is starting to wake up. And the first time we had a Miss America with disabilities. Yeah. Tears. Yeah. The new Barbies in the wheelchairs. In the wheelchairs. <laughs> it was Kleenex time. It's when we realize yes. this world is made up of all kinds of people, and a lot of them do have challenges. Right. And letting that little girl in a wheelchair know that we do see her. Yes. And she's valuable. And now she can have a Barbie doll, which I never really right. craved a Barbie doll. Yeah. But I mean, now I love that one. Yes, absolutely. It's just so important for us all to support others because you never know when someone in your life is going to be affected by something like Parkinson's disease. Right. The absolutely. older they get, the better the chances that they will face a condition right. like that. Right. And I think the opportunity to get comfortable, to be comfortable asking questions, right? Like, can you tell me why you do this? Or do you mind me asking? Because a lot of people with Parkinson's and other of these neurological conditions talk about how they lose their family and friends because people get uncomfortable and they don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. And so they lose people. I heard a gentleman a couple weeks ago say, I thought I had these incredible work friends. We'd all been together, working together for 25 years. And he said, I got this condition. And he said, they suddenly are like embarrassed to be with me. But look around the room. It was a group of rock steady boxers and their families and they meet once a week and go out to lunch after class. Look at all these people I have now. And the room was full. And he said, I'm so lucky. I'm just so lucky. I'm blessed. And I know it. Ruth, the website that you were just talking about a moment ago for Parkinson's, I'm going to make sure that I have all the links and information on our Talking Solutions Facebook page. Oh, fantastic. Along with the podcast of our discussion today. Excellent. Talking about moving day, it is Saturday, September 28th at Wayne Bunker Family Park. It's actually Parkinson's moving day if you want to do the whole phrase. I just think moving day is a clever title. People can get teams, raise funds. It's to support services for people and families dealing with Parkinson's. Parkinson's. This is the perfect time of the year to go outside and do stuff because it's not going to be 115 degrees. It's going to be beautiful, a beautiful thing. Again, like I said, this is our second walk. And, you know, I think it's important that people know because, like you said, people may not be aware of how many people might have Parkinson's. There's a million people in the country living with Parkinson's. And we know also that in the state of Nevada, there's 4,700 people who are living with Parkinson's disease. And that doesn't account for people who aren't being diagnosed. Right. Because I think that's the other challenge and what I hear from people with Parkinson's. And if you start to add anybody who has Parkinson's or Parkinson's with Lewy body, again, people can not get diagnosed early enough or misdiagnosed. So then there's these years where they are getting treated for something else when it would be really helpful if they knew that it was Parkinson's and they were able to get on the right medications and decide that this was really kind of the path that they needed to do in terms of their medical care. So it is a blessing to have a place like Lou Ruvo Center and have people who are internationally known and recognized for their medical care. I know that our doctors and our nurse practitioners who also work in our movement disorders program, they refer out to these programs. We talk about the dancing and the rock steady boxing, they're like, that is one of the best things we can do for people is make sure they get connected. So as a social worker, I just see how they see people as whole people and they understand that. And they're letting folks know here's services and supports for your family as well. They are all the time thinking about what else can we do knowing that exercise and movement is maybe as crucial as anything else they can do. I recommend movement for anybody. As we mentioned, we're going to have links and everything on the Talking Solutions Facebook page along with the podcast of our interview today. I will say, Ruth, I think with any medical condition, knowledge is power. Absolutely. The sooner you find out about a diagnosis like Parkinson's and start taking action and start moving, yes, the better you will fare 
in the long run. Absolutely. And I think, too, if you're someone who's just never been in the gym, maybe never exercised, of course, it's going to be hard to start. And to just change your behavior and change your pattern around those things. And it's why I think it's good to have a class. Yes. Because right? you feel Help a little me. obligated to go. You have people who are going to say, hey, we missed you last week. Where were you? And those for all of us, again, that being seen and saying this is important, it is. So the sooner you do that, the sooner you get into the pattern of doing that with any of us is really important. But it also, again, when the disease is not as advanced, right? So any medicine we do for anything is going to help the best as early as possible. And then all those other things that are important too, and to understand that and to be able to think about now, how do I schedule my day? Because it's going to be a little bit different. Moving day, which is on Saturday, September 28th. This is going to be a great day (laughs) of being outdoors. Funny events, moving, walking, raising funds for services for people with Parkinson's through the Cleveland Clinic and the Lou Rubo Center for Brain Health. It's going to be a great day. This is a family event. You can still sign up. You can still have a team. There's a lot of ways to get involved. Ruth, one of the things that we do as part of Talking Solutions is we always ask, as listeners, what can we do to help you? You know, like we've talked about, Terry, I think your willingness to help us tell this story, I so want people to know that there's someone they can call and whether they do or not, but I worry about the person who's living out of town and maybe not hearing this or they're picking up your podcast somehow and listening to this and maybe they do call. Maybe they say, okay, this isn't just a death sentence. This isn't just me sitting in my chair now until I die. There's a whole lot of things I could be doing here. Or if you love someone who's thinking that and you're like, how do I get them out of their chair? But to think, oh, I could call somebody and oh, there's a boxing class. That always kind of blows people's minds or dancing, that those opportunities for people to hear this information and then just have time to think about it. So, and of course, I'm going to go out and say, this is important. I'm chairing this walk. I want you all to come out, help us raise money, provide services. But we want people to use our services. We're going to provide great services. We're not going anywhere. The Parkinson's Foundation is here to stay, and our partnership with Lou Ruvo is here to stay. But we also need to hear what people need, right? So part of it is you got to come out and say, hey, we wish we had more of this. Hey, we wish you had more of this. That's part of it, too, is for people to come to Moving Day and talk to those of us who represent agencies or who are there to say, we love this. Can we have more? Hey, did you guys ever think of this? So every bit that gets out about this walk so that people follow up somehow, whether it's for themselves, whether it's to sign up for the walk, whether it's to check out one of those classes is so important. And when you can bring people in who are living with these diseases and let them tell their stories, I think that's, to me, the best. I feel like I'm a keeper of stories and I do my best to give integrity to what I retell those stories because I think those are so important that I'm sharing what other people have shared and been through. But again, hearing it firsthand, there's nothing better than that. Come out, we're going to be raising awareness. Be part of the conversation and find out how supportive the Parkinson's Moving Day crowd is going to be at Bunker Park on Saturday the 28th. We'll have the links and everything on the Talking Great. Solutions Facebook page, along with the podcast of our discussion today. Ruth Almain, Cleveland Clinic, Parkinson's Moving Day. Are we forgetting anything? You'll have the links about how to sign up. And there are a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of ideas on there, too. Like if you say, I'd really like to do this, but maybe I've never been a fundraiser. If you want to be the team captain, for a lot of people, it can be hard to ask for money. Part of what I love about this system is just last night, I posted on my LinkedIn, on my Twitter, on my Facebook page, right? Instantly, a colleague from this time zone gave me a donation. I mean, I didn't realize it had even hit Facebook yet, and I had a donation. So there are a lot of ways, again, they'll help you tell the message. The best part is, of course, when you can say, here's why I'm walking, they'll give you wording and help you do this. It is incredibly empowering and a lot of fun. Not that I'm competitive, but I just want to say (laughs) right now I'm in third place as the top donor and Lou Ruvo's in third place. We are neck and neck with Rocksteady Boxing and some of these family teams too. There are two family teams that are the greatest fundraisers right now on that page. So it can be fun too to be with your colleagues or your friends and just know you're doing this absolutely great thing, you know, and throwing a little competitive kind of thing in the meantime. So there's ways to host fundraisers. I'm going to work with Yoga for Life. They provide our yoga program for people with MS through Lou Ruvo. Jackie, who's the owner, is going to help me do a fundraiser and we're going to do some yoga. It's going to be after the walk, but all those funds raised will go towards moving day. So there's a lot of opportunities and ways to help raise money that don't involve that let's sit down and talk over coffee and me ask you for money. 
Some people are really good at that. Most of us are looking for another way to help do that. And there's a lot of options on the page to help you do that. Be a part of it. It is Parkinson's Moving Day on Saturday the 28th at Wayne Bunker Family Park. All the info on the Talking Solutions Facebook page. Ruth, there is so much going on. People could volunteer. They can donate. They can be a part of it. They can learn more. And I would bet you the two top teams that you have yeah. for Moving Day right now, yeah. you say they're families. Yeah. They obviously are families who have had someone with Parkinson's in their midst. Absolutely. They've lived through it, and that's why they're so active. Absolutely. And I'm telling you, most of us, we can't turn down a request for donation. If you say to me, my family, we're living with Parkinson's, here's our deal, would you make a donation? I will. Even when I raise money, I'm always donating to other people's teams because those are my family and friends and people I care about and who have cared about me. Ruth, I'm going to make sure that I have all the links and information on our Talking Solutions Facebook page. Oh, fantastic. Along with the podcast of our discussion today. Parkinson's Moving Day, September 28th. Ruth Almain, thank you so much for joining us today on Talking Solutions. Oh, Terry, thank you for having me. This has been great. Talking Solutions is a production of the Community Relations Department here at Beasley Media Group, Las Vegas. Get more information on today's topic on our Talking Solutions page on Facebook, where you will also find links and a podcast of today's show. Thanks for listening, and have a great week.